caller. Caller 2393. You're live. 393? Yes. Yeah, what yes. Up? Hi, caller. Hi. Hi, Beth Fatal. This is Martha. And, you know, I've been listening to the uh, interview, and I just got to say, how do you deal with the rumors about... I Hawk, and and what do you have to say when people post videos on YouTube and say that he's been spotted with you guys? How do you how do you respond to? I mean, he hasn't been spotted with us. I mean, my thing is if that motherfucker. I mean, if he my he my man, so if he wanted people think that he's alive, then I'm gonna help him with that kind of shit. I've never seen him dead. I didn't go to no funeral. We didn't parade his body around the streets like everybody else. Like, you know, I mean, if, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I really don't, you know, I don't pay no attention to that shit. What? You probably do be seeing him, but his plan is working to fucking perfection. You're not, he, nobody's going to believe that's him after all this time. Everybody is going to be paying attention to whatever they're paying attention to. You can say I saw well, Tupac at Walmart, and anybody gonna be like, "Oh yeah, or it was a lookalike." Well, what did you think of that that hologram at Coachella? What I oh I think that I think that uh fuck that hologram. The hologram was dope, but the people that was motherfucking trying to be with rap with the nigga was corny as fuck. Like, why the fuck would you want to? Nick people said, "Well, damn." If this dude told a feds and everybody that he's a rip or a former rip out of Compton and they killed Tupac, why didn't he go to jail for murder? Then maybe the question is that Pac really not dead. Pac somewhere else and, oh, and maybe they get over. Oh, maybe it's like a You're going to start a whole nother. <laughs> I mean, it's the one. truth if you really look did, at did, it. Did you see Tupac dead? Nobody's seen Tupac dead. The, the thing is this. Um... The person who supposedly cremated Tupac, who I, you know, his mother wanted done uh, quickly if he was if he passed. So this guy got about three million dollars personally for me, cash. And next thing I know, I never heard from the guy I seen again. He retired and left. One thing you gotta realize, <clears throat> the whole world know I hate rats, I hate snitches. I ain't in the teller. So people always wanna know, is Pac dead, is Pac alive? I'm the wrong motherfucker to ask. But I tell you this, if you try to find a person who cremated P Tupac, after he supposed cremated Tupac, he retired and vanished into the sun to the sunset, into the darkness. His code name was Machiavelli, like mine is Simon. And if you know the story of Machiavelli, he faked his own death. But at the same time, you know, they wanted to put Pac back in prison. And Pac would fake his own death and disappear before he go back to prison. The, 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 the reason why I'm exposing this is just to give, the, 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 especially the youngsters, the knowledge to go and research from this premise so you can get at the truth. Because the premises that's been given to most of the youth has been erroneous premises. Mm -hmm. And so you research from the erroneous premises, you're going to get erroneous results. And, um, but I'd like to reemphasize the, uh, the beauty and the importance of those formations that were there 
that was laid from the old legions. Because we didn't know about COINTERPRO. Mm -hmm. I can say from my personal experience and work in organizing that we could have taken the White House easy. Easy. To, under my watch. Really? Yeah. Because we had people who were in the CIA. We had people who were in the FBI. We had a lot of people who were in police forces all around the country. It's a tactic of getting away from all of that. And a lot of it was based on kinship, blood kinship. Your cousin, uh, your a good friend of yours, auntie, uh, uncle. It was almost soundproof, I mean, foolproof. I mean, right. you know, it was, yeah. it was family and you knew it was legit, sincere, and it was easy because you had the intention and they knew why you were there. Right. You were taught what I was there to teach them. And then I'm gone. And if you would see me again, you wouldn't even acknowledge me in that capacity because you already taught that. That's <laughs>
great, let me come back. Oh, you know, in his 40s or whatever. Damn, man. I'm fine. You know, God, great, let me come back. Oh, you know, in his 40s or whatever. Damn, man. I'm fine. I ain't mad, um, I don't got no drip, no problems with nobody. I wish peace and happiness. It was no one else, nowhere else to go, no one else wanted to take me. I was like, you know, all I kept in my mind was one day, I'll be back. I was like, you know, all I kept in my mind was one day, I'll be back. Of course, no list of celebrity death conspiracies would be complete without mentioning the death of beloved West Coast rapper Tupac Shakur. The established police narrative would have us believe that the man who made music about gang members killing each other was killed by a member of a rival gang. But some internet sleuths are just too observant and diligent to believe such a convenient excuse. Several outlandish conspiracy theories concerning Tupac's death have been popularized since 1996, but one particular claim involving communist revolutionaries and state-sanctioned doppelgangers definitely takes the cake. Rumors alleging that Tupac was still among the living sprang up right after his death, partly due to the fact that his body was swiftly cremated almost immediately after an autopsy was supposedly performed. Then, in December 2019, a man named Michael Nice published a video to YouTube in which he claimed to have faked his own death a year earlier and wanted to expose how Tupac had supposedly done the same. Claiming to have been Pac's bodyguard in the 90s, Nice said that he had to fake his own death because he was on the verge of releasing information that would prove that Tupac is still alive, and the shadowy figures behind the scenes were not happy about it in the slightest. Supposedly, an ambulance driver friend picked up Nice, who somehow momentarily stopped his pulse, a trick he had apparently learned as a child, and used a decoy corpse to fool the coroners. Of course, Nice eventually came back from the dead to reveal to the world that Fidel Castro had helped Tupac fake his death and flee to Cuba. Several of Nice's videos that purportedly contained proof of Tupac's survival have been posted to a YouTube channel called Aichini Studios. The Cuba theory is merely one of several absurd ideas that have been cooked up to try and explain the rapper's tragic death. One theory propagated by filmmaker Rick Boss holds that Machiavelli wasn't killed that day in Vegas and instead employed a lookalike so he could sneak off to New Mexico and live amongst the people of the Navajo tribe. Another theory was put forth by Tupac's infamous friend and producer Suge Knight, who was at the wheel of the car in which Tupac was shot. Knight has claimed that he heard Tupac laugh multiple times on the way to the hospital and that he never saw him lose consciousness in the immediate aftermath. He also told the media that Tupac had spoken to him about the idea of faking his own death while they were on vacation in Hawaii. We was in Maui, you know what I mean? And Pac, like, never been to Maui or Hawaii, like, just a vacation, you know what I'm saying? You get to talk about faking his own death. Suge Knight's son, Suge Jr., has his own theory of what happened to Pac. He has made public a video shot in Malaysia of a man that he claims was Tupac. Photos that he says are of Pac in the present day have been called into question because of the obvious likelihood that they were photoshopped. Naturally, Suge Jr. seems to believe that the Illuminati had something to do with Pac's disappearance and adamantly defends his position, a claim that even other Tupac truthers think might be going a bit overboard. Investigators at Assini have made a breakthrough in the Tupac is Alive case, which gives us further insight in the final days before he faked his death where Tupac took a trip to Belize in May 1996. New evidence has emerged, and new leaks have been presented. Just four months before he was supposed to have died, Tupac was staying at the Grove Resort in Belize which is directly opposite Cuba, where a deal was being done with Fidel Castro. Investigators spotted the plane used to fly to Cuba for the meet when Snoop Dogg was pictured in Belize. 
the plate B3 TA was traced back and was never even meant to be in Belize, as this was meant to have been returned to Canada in 1994. When investigators dug deeper into the flight logs there were no traces of the planiver leaving Canada after 1994. So how did it end up in Belize with Tupac in 1996? Investigators believe this plane was used to meet Castro in Cuba and plans were put in place to help Tupac escape the country. And the former senator of Belize would agree to help protect Tupac in Belize. More leaks of the plane used to broker the deal has been leaked. Could this have also been the same plane used to help Tupac escape Vegas? The search continues. In recent years, we've seen a resurgence. You know, Biggie and Pac are always legends in the game and are never far from the conversation. When you consult on projects like this, does it reopen fresh wounds and make you a little sad? Are you happy that a story's still being told? How do you feel when these type of projects come about? I am, I, well, I knew that we were going to be legends. Pac knew we were, he was going to be a legend. We knew we were on a legendary track back then. So, with that, dealing with post Pac, you know, post the legend, but it's not really post because he's still alive. So, therefore, you know, I'm trying to look out for my brother and his legacy and his memory as usual. Um, it is difficult. Everybody can't do it. But I know I had to develop a thick skin in order to, you know, deal with our life in entertainment and the circumstances that we uh, are here you know so i think that Pac would want to be uh, 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 um, remembered i think he would want justice i think he would want people to still be talking about him so it all falls into the vein of what he would want now he may not have approved of these these <laughs> And these police and you know being able to do their stories before I got to do mine right. or anybody in the family got to do theirs but and however Aww. this is life this is what we these are the circumstances and we're gonna handle it the best way possible so we're gonna try to make this I try to make this the best project I could they don't even know I know and they don't even know I'm fucking alive for real I know you know what I'm saying? I'm watching, listen to this. I'm watching the performance right now, you know what I'm saying? I think they did a good job on my animations and the way they put uh, the computer-generated uh, copies and stuff like that. I mean, well, anyway, this is the real Tupac Shakur, and I just want to let y'all know that I'm here, I'm live, and I'm doing my motherfucking thing. And so the Copacella concert that y'all heard, you know what I'm saying, is my little gift to my fans and everything like that out here in the world. And I want to let you know, Thug Life still continues, and we still going to be strong, and we still going to make this money out here. And so to all my fans out there, let y'all know, you know what I mean? We back, baby. We back, baby. We back, baby. Squeeze the bullets to my name on my chest. I put gunshots, but it got weird. Instead of bullets, only smoke and beer. Niggas think I knew. Two men in a suit with just dead.
Let me talk for them, but I'm sad for the good money. If you manage to have my snare, you still lose my money. Or I'd be happy to be for this money. You're now listening to Dance to the Bugger. Oh, how fast you can be out when I'm sleeping. The bad old side. Everything that we used to love for them, I'm going to win some money. That was soon be that's not when I really just want to go and see the. Look, it's all good, I'm still around. Don't try to even sweat this shit. You know what I'm saying? When motherfuckers see you as a threat, that's what happens. They be trying to wipe niggas the fuck off. I'm still keeping game though. You know what I mean? I'm still in the trenches, I'm watching everything. Nothing can go past me. Not a motherfucking die. Well, Trisha and Todd, part of Tupac's legend is that he'd been shot five times and survived before that fateful night here in Las Vegas in 1996. And because of that, Tupac's legacy has always been linked to Vegas. But a local filmmaker says Tupac shouldn't be connected to Vegas because he died here, but because this is where he made his great escape. I'm going straight to the point. After the shooting, what's next? Most people would agree with official reports that after being shot, rap icon Tupac Shakur was taken to UMC where he died six days later. But local filmmaker Rick Boss has an alternate ending. This movie is about Tupac actually escaping from the University Medical Center here in Vegas and relocating to New Mexico getting protection from the Navajo tribe. Boss says when the rapper arrived to Las Vegas for fight night, he was informed of a planned hit on him. Now that's when the escape plan came into fruition from planting a double in Shug Knight's BMW to a strategic aerial exit. When certain FBI agencies are looking for you, the first thing you're gonna do is block the airport so you can't travel out. So the best way to escape is through helicopter.
helicopter, private helicopter, to another state. FBI agents can't go on to tribal land without the tribal council's permission. Boss says that's why Navajo land in New Mexico made for the perfect hideout. And while many may dismiss the premise as fiction, Boss says the information for the script came from people in Tupac's family and circle. I mean, you can write a fiction, you can write a fiction story, but this is not fiction. This is facts through certain people that I know. Boss knows G Money and Snoop Dogg, who collaborated with Tupac, and Boss's father knew Tupac's mom from their involvement in the Black Panther Party. Boss says ultimately he wants Tupac fans to see the movie and decide for themselves. The man who plays Tupac, Richard Garcia, says he believes the rap legend did die in Las Vegas in 1996 at the age of 25. But his legacy? still very much alive. He's gone, but he lives on, like you said, like his mother said, he lives on through all of us, through our memories, through our hearts, through our um, tribute. This film is still in production and Boss says it will likely come out sometime next year. Trisha and Todd? When, when Pac died, if he really did, you know. If he really died. What do you mean by that? I mean, when I left that hospital, me and Pac was laughing and choking. So I don't see how somebody can turn from doing well to doing bad. So you and seriously think that he might still be alive? I'm going to tell you this, Pac, you never know. Oh, there you go. Yo, yo, what's up? Trick or Tretch here, Naughty by Nature. You know what time it is, man. We feel the flow. We get it in. The ghetto bastards in the building, but it's a go TV, yo. If you ain't feel it, you ain't touch it right. We real street with it. So if you ain't ready for it, get on the sidewalk. One last question. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. What's that video? No, 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 I'm in Last time I saw him, he was in church, man. <laughs> Early. <laughs> Early, man. I just want to shake your hand and say, I'm a black man. I saw him, he was in Cuba. Yeah. Out of that Vegas to see Pac, we we go to Suge House yep. first. So we haven't even seen Pac. Yep. We just talking to Suge and he got the head wrapped up and he oh telling my us God what happened and you know Pac gonna be all right he gonna pull through you know he got shot nine times before he gonna be all right he gonna they hit me in the head so we feeling like it's gonna be all right until we go to the hospital and see that it ain't all right he got tubes in him and it's like when i walked in i could just feel like he wasn't even there and i fainted 
Then his mother, you know, got me up and walked me in the bathroom and had a conversation with me about being strong. She was like, my baby ain't never seen you weak. I don't want I don't want you to be weak in front of him. You go in the bathroom and fix yourself up and you go back in here and you talk to him and you tell him how you feel. My baby loves you. Cause she knew it was a little tension, but she knew how much we loved each other. So she gave us a moment for me to say some things to him as far as how much I love him. But I knew that that was going to be my last time speaking with him.